Hey, welcome to another episode of Let's Build Something Simple Because It's Harder to Mess Things Up. Uh, in this video, we're going to make ourselves a coloration fixture. Tektronix part here. It's an input normalizer, 15 picofarad rated BNC type. Part number 067-0537-00. Basically what these things are used for is for calibrating your inputs on your oscilloscopes. You imagine if you have a, uh, a scope that needs to be um, calibrated and you have a signal source that you're calibrating from, you connect that with a nice, nicely made brand new BNC cable between the two and you send your signal through, gets the other end all fine, calibrate your uh, oscilloscope. Then when it comes to using your oscilloscope, you plug your scope probe in and things aren't right. It doesn't read properly. That's because a BNC cable which you've calibrated with has different characteristics to your oscilloscope probe, different capacitance, different resistance, that sort of thing. What this does is this corrects your uh, your BNC cable to appear to the uh, oscilloscope as though that BNC cable was an oscilloscope probe. It adds some capacitance and whatnot and um, it makes the uh, calibration correct so that when you calibrate it, the scope it looks to the scope like you've got the probe connected. When you put your actual probe on, everything should be pretty much correct. So um, these things tend to be rather expensive, I've seen, um, on eBay and whatnot. But they're very, very simple. Just a couple of parts and um, nothing much more than that. So um, I've got the uh, manual here. Uh, the first page is basically what I've just explained. And it's saying how to adjust it if it needs adjustment, which is good because um, we'll need to uh, adjust it from the first time we... Uh, or before the first time we use it, but it says in there that it should never need readjustment. But if it does, this is how to do it. Uh, we got a picture of the exploded view. It's just a box with a lid and a, a holder for the parts inside, and then um, input jack and output jack. And most importantly, we have a schematic. This is awesome because from this we can make our own unit for the for a couple of dollars. You can see here we got the input here, the output there. The outside part of the jack is connected to the uh, the case, which is signified by this uh, dashed line. So the ground is just straight in, around and straight out through the case. Through the middle, we've got a uh, 1 mega ohm resistor, a uh, 12 picofarad capacitor in parallel, and a 2 to 8 picofarad trimmer capacitor, just to uh, adjust it to calibrate that in and get it all, uh, all nice and spot on. So it's three parts, two jacks and a box, and that's pretty much it. So I've got my box here. This is a, a Takachi box, TD4-6-3B, it's 40 by 27 by 60 millimeters. Little uh, aluminium block, uh, box, powder coated black or painted black. Uh, you could find easily find a, a Hammond type box if you're in the US or another country that sells Hammond or in your country there'll be a, a manufacturer that makes nice die cast aluminium boxes I'm sure. So it's just, there's no no uh, requirement on size, just big enough to fit, small enough to not be too big and unwieldy. Then we need our jacks, input jack and output jack. We need a uh, one mega ohm resistor. It says a uh, half watt. I think this is a half watt. I believe it is. Maybe it's one watt. I think it's half watt. I can't remember. But I got a, a good one with a good low temperature coefficient, one percent. So that's going to work well. I've got my 12 picofarad capacitor. I think this is like a 1 kV or 500 volts or something. I don't think the voltage really matters um, as long as it's 12 picofarad, but that's just what I found in the right um, rating. And our adjustable little trim pot, which is going to need the uh, legs extended, but that's all right. We can do that with a bit of solder. And that's basically all we need. Pretty simple. Um, interesting thing about these connectors. I... Uh, I paid what I thought, well, I think, still think it is too much for that. I went to the first shop in the Kiyabara and I found these. And I went, yeah, I want them. And uh, this is 10 bucks, a thousand yen. Yeah, it was a little bit more expensive than what I thought. But I was like, uh, I've already asked him for it. So I'll just buy it. See, I'll, I'll buy one, see how good it is. And it turns out this is made by uh, TDC. Uh, Tokyo Denshi uh, Company. Denshi means electronic. Tokyo Electronic Company. Um, looks like it's got a uh, silver, a silver plated center pin, and it is rated to 50 ohms. Same with this. This is the uh, same company made the output jack. That cost me a couple bucks. This one was the expensive one for some reason. Um, but then I went to another store and I found these, which cost me 150 yen each, like under two dollars each. But I did some research on these, and um, 
These are from a different brand, I can't remember offhand, but they're rated to 50 slash 75 ohm. So um, I'm, I'm not sure what the actual rating is. Uh, these ones are rated 250 ohm, these are 50 slash 75. There's slight differences in the end there. And that's going to focus. You can see slight difference. So um, seeing as this is for calibrating a uh, calibrating a scope, I think I'm going to use the ones that are actually rated to 50 ohms. Um, these ones are all gold plated center pins, but this one has a silver plated for some reason. This one's gold plated. Don't know why, but I'm going to use expensive ones just because I know that the ratings are what I want. So the first step, I guess, is to uh, drill some holes, get these mounted, and once I've done that, then I can start soldering in the uh, the components. The way I'm going to do this is um, I'm going to drill a central hole that can sit in. Then I'm going to drill the uh, four outer holes, and I'm actually going to tap into the aluminium. I could drill straight through and put um, nuts and bolts either side, but I think um, if I tap into the aluminium, it's going to ensure that I've got a very good electrical connection, and also it means I don't have to use nuts and washers, which should turn out to be a little bit easier. Aside from the fact that I've got to tap the holes, which kind of probably makes it a bit of a moot point. But it will make sure I've got a very, very good connection from the front to the back. Okay, so there we go. Hole there, four holes. Same that side there. I tap those out to M3 by 0.5. Got a few screws that will um, screw straight in. And um, that should fit just on there beautifully. I use my uh, Gundam marker to uh, draw that out just because it's real fine. This is like a pen that you use for putting detail lines and shadow lines on your um, your plastic models. Had this for years and I finally found a use for it because it's really, really fine sort of for detail work. So I was able to get nice, accurate lines on there. And if we um, peel that off, it should look pretty good underneath. Oh, yeah. So that will look like I bought one. Look at that. Beautiful. This aluminium is real easy to work. Doesn't leave dags and stuff. It comes out real clean. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Point to point wiring. As pure as it gets. And that's actually pretty solid in there with the, um, the resistor sold at both ends. It's not really moving around. Uh, don't really need it crazily supported because I'm only going to be um, adjusting it once with the, um, the adjustment screwdriver and that's it. It's just left Lid on there with a hole just in case it needs um, further tweaking in the future. Don't have to open it up. You can actually uh, tweak it with the, um, with the lid on so it's all shielded up. I might see if I can find a little rubber bung to put there to stop dust getting in. But um, that's all done. And then on the other side I've... Uh, Labelled it there to look just like the real one. Look at that. Beautiful. I wrote a, it's a tech equivalent rather than just having it tectronic so that people know it's not the original item, but it's good enough. Good enough for a uh, for a home gamer. And uh, it says the same there as what's on the um, on the tech one. Input RC normaliser. What's in there? 1 mega ohm plus 15 puff and uh, used directly on BNC input. So all we need to do now is put that lid on, stick it on the um, on the RC or the LCZ meter and uh, twiddle that knob until it's all um, in line and uh, we should be good to go. All right, so I got this thing hooked up to my uh, LCZ meter, the old Fluke 4276A. Uh, I did an earlier video on this machine, so if you want to see a uh, a little bit of a longer video on the restoration of this. Uh, check out my uh, video history. But um, we're connected here with four wire. We've got the uh, four BNCs, 50 ohm BNCs. Nice uh, Canair RG56. Uh, I made these cables myself, crimped them up and that. They're not soldered, they're crimped. They're really, really high quality. So um, we're going to get a good reading. Uh, I've got them coming up to uh, these joiners here. So they're plugged straight in. So because it's four wire, we're going to be reading the uh, the capacitance between the uh, the BNC jacks. So we're getting as accurate as we possibly can. Uh, at the moment, we're reading 18.1716-ish. So I'll give that a tweak and see how close we can get to 15.
I think that's pretty good. 15.00. I'm going to call that as uh, pretty much spot on. Now, uh, to plug up that little hole there, I actually tapped that out at M5. And I got this uh, M5 screw. So that will screw in and uh, keep it nicely shielded. So there's no uh, gaps in that case at all. And uh, stop dust and stuff getting in too. And that is it. We are done. Now with the instructions here, it actually says you have to compensate it for the scope you're actually using it with. So um, you have to uh, tweak this to make sure that your square wave is nice and square, just like you do with a normal oscilloscope probe. So I'll do that uh, when it comes time to use it on the, uh, the scope that I'm going to use it on, the uh, 2467. And uh, that means that it's set for that scope. So if I then use it on a different scope, I've got to compensate it or um, yeah, adjust it for that other scope or whatever scope I, I decide to use it with, just like you do with your probes. If you use probes on one scope, you've got to compensate it for that, that uh, scope. If you move those probes to another scope, you've got to compensate them for the, uh, the other scope. You can't just you know, swap it without doing any adjustments. So I'll, um, I'll be doing that uh, at the end when I go to use it. But um, for now, I know that's pretty much dead spot on. A little, little tiny bit of drift there, 15.01, so it's probably about 15.005. But um, yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. So thumbs up, we are all done with this. And that is how you make yourself an input normalizer. Down below I'll um, put some uh, links to, the, uh, to all the PDF files. And uh, also if you need to make some of the other um, sizes, I believe there's like 15, pick a farad, 20, 24, 47, maybe a few others, but I'll, I'll add some links so you can um, have a look and see what values you need to make yours. So uh, that's it for this time. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you find it helpful. Stick around and we'll see you in the next video.